Hello, and welcome to the Dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at a Monk Rogue multi-class build. I kind of talked about this one in my last video. The other one was more Monk-heavy, and mostly we wanted Rogue for a bit of maneuverability and for some extra sneak attack damage. This one is going to be more Rogue-focused, and basically we're just looking to get Monk for some extra attacks and, you know, maybe some other perks like unarmored defense and some key points and stuff like that. But mostly it's going to be focused on the rogue and specifically on the assassin. So this one's going to be more like a ninja style character. We're going to be sneaky, we're going to be stealthy, we're going to be looking to do a lot of damage and mostly try to assassinate our target. Now, to be honest, assassin is one of my less favorite rogue archetypes. But that doesn't mean that it's not really good. I just find that it's basically only combat focused for the most part. And, you know, that can be a little unfortunate. But if you're in a very combat heavy game, then Assassin would be very good. Assassin is also one of those ones where you kind of either want a multi-class or you just want to go all the way through if you think you're going to go all the way to 20. And so if your campaign is going to go to 20, I might want to just stay Assassin and finally be able to get the uh, Death Strike ability at 17. But that's a lot of levels, and I really feel like Assassin is pretty lackluster between levels, say, 3 and 17. 3 is actually really good for them, but your infiltration expertise and your uh, imposter abilities. They have some nice roleplay potential. I think there's a lot of storytelling type of aspect there. But for a class that's so focused on just doing lots of damage in combat, none of those abilities really help you to do that. It's kind of like Wizards of the Coast realized, oh hey, all this class does is lots of damage. Let's give it some roleplay stuff. But it doesn't really have much there either. So. This is one reason why I don't mind multi-classing it, because I really feel like a lot of their abilities are fairly lackluster in general. Now for the monk option, you actually have some really strong choices. The most obvious and thematic, of course, is going to be the way the shadows. And this is one I'm going to talk about a lot in this video, because I think it's a very strong choice combined with Assassin. But we shouldn't rule out some of the others. If you wanted to make a ranged character, then taking a Kensai and using a longbow as one of your weapons of choice is a perfectly fine choice. And Kensai also can help to fill that gap with the, well not really gap, but help to fulfill one of the prime things you want on the Assassin, which is a high initiative. Remember, if the Assassin acts in the combat round before their opponent has, then you have advantage on all the attacks. So the fact that the Kensai can add their uh, Charisma bonus to their initiative just is going to allow you to have your Dex bonus plus that, and you're going to have a very high initiative score. And if you take something like, say, the Alert feat for another five-year initiative, your initiative is going to be insane. So I think it's quite strong there. I even think that the way the Four Elements Monk is pretty good. If you take, like, um, the Fangs of the... Things of the Fire Snake, for example, and Clutch of the North Wind at six, you can take, it's basically like a hold person, and obviously if they're held, then all your attacks can be automatic crits, and uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage there. And if you're already taking, like, say, five levels a monk for extra attack and stunning fist, eh, you might as well take six for that. Things of the Fire Fist, by the way, is just gonna give you the option of using a bunch of ranged attacks and fire damage. That's not always the best, but it might be nice to have some flexibility there and not just be strictly physical damage like you usually would be. I'm not saying it's the best choice, but it's by no means a bad choice. And it might add a little more flavor if you wanted to have more of an assassin with a magical feel to it, as opposed to an assassin with a more martial feel to it. Both can be kind of interesting choices. So I think your monk choice is less critical, but... I do like the, the ability to step through shadows that the, uh, that the Shadow of Soul is going to bring us. And they've got some other pretty nice abilities as well, which combine pretty well with the Assassin. Plus, thematically, 
it's just very strong. So I talked about in my last video how usually when I'm multi-classing, I'm looking to either become good at something I'm not good at, that's not really going to be the case in this one, or I'm looking to make myself even better at something I'm already strong at. And that's really what we're looking to do here. The assassin has a very interesting ability. Don't forget, when you're sneak attacking, you have to have an ally within five feet, or you have to have surprise, or advantage, or something along those lines. However, that's not true. Uh, that's not true if you have advantage on the attack roll. And because the assassin has advantage on attack rolls, if their opponent hasn't acted yet in the combat, then you'll be able to still sneak attack even if you go before anyone else on your team has had a chance to move. You don't need an ally necessarily within five feet, and you don't even need to have surprise. Obviously, surprise is going to be what we're looking for the most, because if we have surprise, then we're having automatic crits on the assassin. But even without that, all we have to do is really pick targets that are acting lower than us in the initiative round. We're going to be able to have advantage on those attacks, and those attacks will automatically be able to be sneak attacks whether we have an ally within range or not. So it kind of solves the problem that in the last video we were using Swashbuckler to kind of solve this problem, and this one we're using the Assassin to sort of solve that problem. And then we can combine it with, say, like the Monk's abilities to have a lot of maneuverability or to step through shadows and get advantage on those attacks in order to, or on the first attack at least, to you know really try to maximize this and advantage is also going to help us to land more, more critical hits which is just going to up our sneak attack damage even more uh, the other thing i'm looking to take from the monk is just the ability to have a bunch of extra attacks because don't forget if you do have surprise on your opponent all those attacks are automatic crits which means that if you have a bunch of attacks in the round you're just going to be doubling up all those attack dice for everyone that hits. And since you'll have advantage, they're probably all going to hit, or at least the vast majority will hit. So going to five for the extra attack isn't a bad option. Having the, your bonus action option with a martial arts, uh, with an unarmed strike isn't bad. Using a key point for flurry of blows and making two extra attacks if you have surprise on your opponent. Very strong as well. And... Uh, so mostly that's what we're trying to take from the monk. The problem with assassin or any rogue in a lot of cases is that you do so much damage on your sneak attack that if that attack misses, it's very crippling. You're not like a fighter where each attack is doing a lot less damage, but you have so many attacks that you make that damage up in bulk. And then fighters can use things like great weapon mastery or sharpshooter if you're using a bow. And so that damage is getting compounded on attack after attack after attack, uh, possibly even more if you have like, you know, high enough level, you can be able to 20 and have four attacks around or whatever, right? You could action surge and have a ridiculous number of attacks on a fighter. The rogue, you don't really have that option. So if you miss, then you've basically contributed nothing in that combat round. The nice thing about having an extra attack is it just gives you that backup where if I missed on the first one, I can still get in that hit, and now I can apply my sneak attack damage to that hit. It's basically like an insurance policy. And the monk gives us not only a second attack at level 5, the way that most of the martial classes would, also gives us the option of, a, of an unarmed bonus attack, which you could get with a second weapon anyways, but with the monk, you can use key points to get two attacks if you have a surprise. And I feel like that's pretty strong, combined with some of the other Monk abilities, like the faster movement speed and whatnot. Um, I think Monk is adding enough to justify it. I'll probably make more videos in the future where we look at other options with the Assassin, because I think Ranger, an Assassin, has a lot of potential too. That's one that I'm gonna wanna make an entire video just dedicated to that multi-class, because it's really so good. Um, Obviously, you're probably looking to be more of a ranged guy in that case. This one, you know, if you want to get up close and personal, I feel like Monk uh, has probably just as much to off offer as Ranger does. So, one thing I like about this build is there's a couple different good breakdowns. You could just take 
say your five levels of monk, you get extra attack. You could take six levels of monk, and if you want with way of the four elements, you're going to be able to get your hold person. If you want with shadow, you're going to be able to get your uh, move through shadows ability. So both of those are pretty decent. And 14 levels of rogue is pretty good. That's still going to give us a lot of abilities, including that level 14 ASI, in case we wanted that. However, we could go 8 and 12, which is still going to give us... It's going to give us more key points. It's going to give us an ASI from Monk to make up for the one we didn't get on Rogue at 14. So we're actually going to have just the same number as we would have had either way. It's another pretty good breakdown. And, um, you know, if you think you're going to go to 20, you could even just take three levels of Monk and take 17 levels of Rogue in order to, to uh, get your Death Strike. I don't think this is the best option. If you were going to go something like that, this is where I think someone like the Ranger, like say a Gloomstalker, who, you know, has uh, also an initiative bonus and gets an extra dice of damage on that first round, I feel like that might be a stronger option. You'll also have something like Hunter's Mark that you can cast as a bonus action on that first round as well. Um, that might be the stronger option if you're planning on going all the way to 20. But, you know, if you want a more martial feel and uh, less of a range feel, then you know, this one's perfectly good. So that's the basic idea. We're going to be trying to find ways to, to get surprise, and we're going to be trying to take advantage of that. Where we don't have surprise, we're going to be looking to have as much initiative as possible, act as early in the round as possible, and have advantage on all those attacks. So how are we going to try to accomplish this? Uh, there's a few different ways. Obviously, feats is going to be very big. And I've already mentioned the alert feat. Um, Alert is probably the most important feat you can take on this character because acting quickly in the round is so critical. You could take the Magic Initiate feat and grab something like a Hex spell. This one basically just does what we were going to do with uh, Gloomstalker Ranger and use Hunter's Mark, but you could do it here as well. I think that's a decent option, but I think Alert is just far more important in this case. I also like Sentinel. I mentioned that in the last video. But if you're going to be, you know, more of a melee style assassin, then having Sentinel just gives you an, another chance to get in that sneak attack and sneak attack damage, of course, on your opponent's turn instead of your own, allowing you to basically just double up sneak attacks. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think the, the martial adept feat and using a post, like we mentioned in the last one, also an option. But because I'm prioritizing alert more in this one and I feel like Sentinel is probably stronger than Martial Adept overall I don't know that I'd recommend it as highly as I did in the other one however uh, that doesn't mean you couldn't take it it's still pretty good if you're going to be using a bow and using range then obviously Sharpshooter is a pretty strong choice allowing you to ignore everything except for full cover uh, and Lucky of course is always just a solid choice I like Lucky because if you do happen to crap out and just roll really bad on a chance when you really needed to either land a hit or maybe even just re-roll your initiative because so much of your of your damage could depend on just acting quickly in the round. That, you know, if you could have a plus 10 or plus 13 or whatever to your initiative, but if you roll a 1, that's still going to kind of suck. So being able to have advantage on that or not really advantage, but being able to re-roll it and then take the better of the two dice is actually really big. And then, in general, Lucky is just such a powerful feat due to the fact that, you know, three three dice is, is quite a bit to work with, and it's very flexible. You can use it on your attacks. You can use it when somebody else is attacking you, you know, force them to, to re-roll attacks. You can use it on saving throws. You know, it's just got so so many different things that you can do with it that it's just a very, very powerful and very flexible feat. And that's why I like it so much. That's why I recommend it so often. So those would be my top uh, feat recommendations. As far as races, obviously, if we're talking about having a lot of feats, Variant Human is obviously a very strong choice. Starting with a feat at level one is just amazing. However, there's also some other really strong options that I want to talk about. Obviously, anything that gives you dex is a pretty solid choice. But in particular, the Lightfoot Halfling with their ability to basically hide behind, uh, you know, 
your allies essentially and then try to make sneak attacks from there is pretty pretty advantageous it's a lot easier on a half link to try to justify your dm why you might be able to have a surprise against your ally or against your enemy sorry or your ally pvp campaigns are a thing um so i think they're very strong the ghostwise halfling is pretty cool as well you basically have telepathy you know, essentially uh nothing wrong with that and of course halflings all have decks you also have the halfling luck racial ability which you know if you roll a one you can re-roll it and it's kind of like like lucky like we just talked about just gives you more options and more opportunities to just not suck essentially and you know not sucking is is a good thing in dungeons and dragons um you know something like a drow elf is, is very strong you have some racial abilities you also have decks again wood elf is pretty good if you're planning on trying to use a bit more of the mobility aspect of this character then having an extra five feet of movement is not a bad thing at all either of course so there are some really strong choices if you're using other sources something like a kenku of course is a very good choice as well um i don't think that but i don't know i, I kind of really lean towards either the variant human or some of the halflings in this choice or in this case and like i said the elves are all very strong choices as well so i do think that there's a lot that this one has to offer now, as for trying to get surprise, this is one of the reasons I really like the, uh, the, the monk, the way of shadows, because you can move through shadows and then just try to ambush somebody from somewhere they're not expecting. And especially if they don't get to see you do this, like say you're a halfling and you're already hiding behind your ally, there's really no chance for an opponent to even know that you were there. Um, also things like you know, if you wanted to try to set up weird combinations with, like, say, darkness, if you'd gone with the Drow Elf, for example, or you just want to use a darkness spell, then throwing that on your enemies so that they can't actually see you, of course, again, easy way of getting advantage on your attacks. I don't know that you really need it on this character as much because you have so many other ways of getting advantage on your attacks already, whether it be the monk stepping through shadows and attacking on your first your first attack, having advantage automatically whether it's your assassin ability to just have advantage if your opponent hasn't acted yet in, in the combat there's a lot of different ways for you to, to do, you to set this up I'm going to talk about another variant on this idea which is going to require a third class to multi-class into and so it becomes a pretty heavy investment and you may not want to do that but it's the idea of just taking two levels of fighter for action surge and basically, we're just trading our long-term power for the idea of just going all in when we have surprise and just really making the most of it. You're gonna get in a bunch of monk attacks. Those attacks are all gonna be automatic crits. You're gonna have your sneak attack in there as one of those attacks. That's gonna be an automatic crit. And then you just action surge and do it all over again. I mean, granted, you're not gonna have your sneak attack again, but you just take a bunch more attacks and those attacks are also automatic crits. This also gives you the option of taking a fighting style, which could let you dual wield if you wanted to, and take that fighting style, which is, uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. The main thing is you're still gonna be wanting to go very dex heavy, but fighters have either 13 strength or dex as a multi-class requirement. So, you know, not both, just one or the other. And so it's still perfectly in line with the same stats. We're not having to grab a bunch of stuff from other sources. Uh, you know, you're not having to worry about needing five different stats that you have to max out. You're still just concentrating on decks for the most part. So I think it's pretty decent, and it's one I at least wanted to, ma uh, to mention. If you're really, really looking to just do as much damage as possible in a round, definitely consider it. It's even good for the range variant, because of course you can take the archery fighting style. So either way, I think it's pretty decent. I don't know that I'd necessarily look to do that myself, just because you're now looking at a third class and it's gonna take a long time for you to start getting those abilities. Uh, you know, you're gonna be looking like 13th to 15th level by the time you've actually got everything that you wanted all ready and raring to go. But I'm not saying it's necessarily bad either. And if you're really just looking to do like as much damage in one round as possible, at least consider it. 
because fighter has a lot to option, or a lot of options to op. So. so those are my thoughts on the ninja. I really like the idea of combining the fast movement of the monk, the unarmored defense of the monk as well, which is pretty sweet, and you know the fact that your monk weapons can scale up if you take enough monk levels. Like if you say, you know, if you went to like eight levels or so, then even something like a dagger becomes a pretty de deadly weapon. Um, and then just combined with with the assassin ability to get advantage on your attacks so easily and just give you more opportunities to crit. If you have surprise, guaranteed crits, it it really just gives you a classic that has phenomenal burst damage potential. And if you're not wanting to play like a paladin caster type or a half caster in that type of burst, you want to go with more of a just straight up, I'm a weapons guy, I'm not a spell caster, but still want to have similar kind of burst, this is definitely one of the best ways to go about it. So those are my thoughts. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and most importantly, leave your comments. I'm sure that some of you have experimented with these kind of builds, and will even have your own ideas. If you like the video, that's great, please let me know. If you didn't like it, please tell me why. That's okay, because I only get better through, you know, constructive criticism. So nothing wrong with leaving me your thoughts, even if you're like, hey, your video sucked. I would have liked it more if you would have covered this. That's okay too. So those are my thoughts on everything. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time in the dungeon.